Well, for me, uh, one of the issues that I took is I like the theme, but I don't like the theme coming off of the one before it. The episode with Yoda and how important all the clones were in the leadership is basically the same theme as this one. And when you recall that these were these came out the same night, if I'm not mistaken. Back to back. Back to back. And so I pictured myself watching those, watching this, and then watching the or the one before it. It's the same theme. It's the same story in many ways. Oh, and it's, it's very it's, different. But... It's one Jedi with three clones versus the Separatists. Right. I mean, yeah. It's... And it's still the same theme about making the clones important. Yeah. Which is, I think, something they had to hit in this series, like you have said. But I just, I two in a row. I mean, and to me, this this would have made sense to be the premiere one because it's more characters and it's more of the universe and it's a bigger story that is going to carry on a little further rather than being a one off story like the first one was. Well, so I'll give it credit for that. But they are very very similar in what they're talking about, how they execute. Right. One thing, another thing I didn't like is Plo Koon's spacewalk. Okay, so it wasn't just Leia. Grand Plo Koon seems specifically designed in some ways to survive in space. Not the issue that I have. Uh, what I was troubled by is that he seemed really slow when it comes to attacking the droids near the end of the episode. So he's he's got this amazing ability to be out in space, and he just does everything really slow until he needs to be quick, and then he can be quick. Well, this is a problem, I think, in all of Star Wars, is that they never use the Force in an effective manner. There's so many things they could do, but it is a great example. He should have been able to just crush those guys or send them those droids away right away. But instead, like you said, he pulls out his lightsaber and waits for them to fight, or he... Uses the force to lift clones in the air so he can move them behind the battle droids so they Instead can shoot Instead of just them. the clones in front of them. Rather, or, or just push them, the, the droids, far away. Mm -hmm. And then they're stuck floating in space because they don't have rockets or anything to, to move around. So yeah, it, it is a little, but I, that's the problem with the force being so powerful, is that if they really used it like they could, they would win every battle in ten seconds. It's true. Finally, I felt the climax is oddly paced. And what I mean is, the driving force of the story is Plo Koon and the clones might be forgotten by the Republic, and we're supposed to learn that these guys have a no-man-left-behind attitude. Well, kind of. Yoda, Mace, and Obi-Wan are absolutely ready to let everyone die for the greater good, but not Anakin and not Ahsoka. Once the major con conflict of the story is overcome, and Plo Koon and the clones are found, the story, really, the conflict, is over. But, there's another cool chase scene between Anakin's ship and the Malevolence, but while it's interesting, we know we are going to have scores of space battles. It seemed like an extra addition meant more to get us to the next episode, which is fine, but I would have liked the, the story to have ended right there. I didn't need one more thing. Another thing that annoyed me about that is they have this space chase where basically the Malevolence shoots an ion blast at Anakin, and they are able to make it to hyperspace in time to avoid the blast, so they escape. And then... Grievous turns to Dooku, and Dooku is questioning whether he should even be in charge of anything anymore, and they've completely failed because now they're going to know there's an ion cannon, even though they already knew there was an ion cannon, and I don't know why it's so important they don't... I would tell them they have an ion cannon and you're coming to crush them. <laughs> so it, it, it goes back to to stop beating the bad guys down. Let them be a big bad force. You can still obviously have Anakin escape, but you don't need to make it seem like Grievous is about to lose his job because they they weren't able to blast one ship. I mean, he just took out three Star Cruisers but right before that, you but he let four every, guys escape. If the story ends when the clones in Plo Koon are, ca or are rescued, then you don't have any of this. you got to kind of cut it off when the cutting off is good. But then again, it could be a, we don't have any... We have this extra block that we need to fill, so let's fill it with stuff. Yeah, we're not we at could, 22 minutes. Where you could fill it with more character development. Yeah, with the or, clones. or make some of, just make some of the stuff within it a little longer. That's true. Finally, the ranking. One of the things I'd like to do is start ranking these episodes. And so this I rank as number two from the two that we have discussed so far. Where do you rank it? So we're not including the movie. We're not including the movie. Because we all Evans, know that would no. probably be last anyway. Well, I don't know. There might be some stinkers in our future. but I'm, I'm sure there will be, but that will be last for a while, I would at least hope. I'll, I would probably put this at number two as well. Again, my biggest problem with the first episode is that it just didn't seem like the way to kick off a series, but it's a better individual episode than this one, and when you watch them sequentially, you see a lot of the things in, in this episode, Rising Malevolence, that you already saw in Ambush, so it seems more like a retread of Ambush on a bigger scale, so I, I would put this one second, but I still enjoyed this one. Me too. Uh, so, both Luke Neitzel and Maya Madrid, we both rank this number two. Moving on now to our final clip, Other Nerd Stuff. Luke, what other nerd stuff are you looking into lately? So I just finished podcast Heaven's Gate, 
which is a 10-part podcast, and it's hosted by Glenn Washington, and it is about the Heaven's Gate cult in the late, I think, 97 that had hill bop, mm bop. That's right. The hill bop comet was coming by, and they thought they were going to leave on a spaceship behind it, and they took poisoned Kool Aid, and I think it was around thirty people that ended up killing themselves. And this podcast goes through kind of the beginnings of the group because the group started in like the sixties or seventies. They've been around for forever, and it follows their history and their two leaders. Their actual real founder wasn't Apple White, who you see in all the videos with the crazy eyes. It was another woman who actually passed away. And kind of sent them off course even further because they didn't know how to cope with her not being the leader anymore. But what's really interesting about this is the host, Glenn Washington, grew up in a cult. So he understands the topic really well. He wasn't in Heaven's Gate. He was in something else in Michigan. But he understands it and it's really, really sympathetic to the people. It understands or tries to understand why they make these decisions. It tries to have compassion for them and for their family. It doesn't make excuses for things that are done. But I really felt like I got a better understanding of who these people are and how a person could get to the place where they might join something that sounds so batshit crazy to the rest of us. But he paints a really good picture of just, you know, they find people who are are lonely and they have nothing and no one else in their life. And when they find people who are willing to appreciate them and talk to them, they just want more of that. And then you slowly introduce this mythology or whatever you want to call it and you go, okay, well, I can put up with that because at least I'm with people. And then you hear it so much that you end up believing it and becoming a part of it. So I thought it was a really fascinating and it's only 10 episodes. They don't stretch it out too much. So it's, it's great. If you like, if you like kind of investigative podcasts, this is fun. I like a lot of the true crime ones. So this was slightly different topic for me. And I had a really, really, I wouldn't say fun time because it's not a fun subject matter, but a really interesting time just learning about it. Very good. Uh, for me, I was checking into the NHL a little bit over the week, and I was looking at your favorite team, the Minnesota Wild, which is also my favorite team. The bad news is they're in second to last place in their division, but their good news is that if they were in the other division, they'd be like in third place. So I'm wondering about playoff slots. There's been a lot of reconfiguring since I was a big hockey fan back in the day before the lockout. So can you explain to me the the whole playoff scenario and where the Wild stand right now? So hockey playoffs, you have two conferences, four divisions. The top three teams in each division make the playoffs. And then there's two wild card spots. Which only be, two. Yeah, only two. Okay. So you're still having eight teams make the playoffs, as you always have. But what they used to do is they just say the top eight teams in the West go and the top eight teams in the East. Now what they do is the top three in each division go, and then there's two wild card slots that go in. And they you stay within your division unless you're a, a wild card. The Wilds are in by far the best division in hockey. They are vying for a, a wild card spot. I have a hard time seeing them getting into the top three in their division. But they'll be around that area. I don't have a lot of faith in much happening with this. They're in a tough spot where their their defense is very, very good. Their goaltending is solid enough. Their forwards are not developing. Their young forwards are not developing and not staying healthy. And they're relying too heavily on guys like Eric Stahl, who's done better than anyone could have thought, but you're not going to go far if Eric Stahl's your highest scoring forward at, at his age. So they're going to be in that unfortunate area they've kind of always existed at where they might make the playoffs, they might just miss, but even if they make the playoffs, they'll probably be swept out or lose in, in five. This isn't a team that's designed in the current stages to make a run. Well, on that depressing note, uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this episode uh, despite its ending. Thank you guys for joining us. Once again, I'm Maya Madrid. I can be reached on Twitter at Maya Madrid. Luke, where, th where can they reach you? I am at Luke underscore Neitzel, N-E-I-T-Z-E-L. Once again, thanks guys. This has been Kid Seriously. We're out. See ya. <laughs>